Hi, welcome back to Rodan Studios. Today we're going to do another episode of Dev Loot, and today's episode will be creating your first game. Before I start, I want to say three things really quickly. Uh, the first thing will be thank you for the feedback on the first episode. A lot of you guys really liked it, and I'm happy that you did. Uh, so that kind of gives me the heads up to keep going with this series, or at least keep trying. Uh, the second thing is that we're almost at 5,000 subscribers on the YouTube channel. And I want to go ahead and thank everybody who subscribed so far. Uh, if you're just watching uh, and haven't subscribed, I also want to thank you as well. Uh, and I hope you enjoy the content. And hopefully we can reach 5,000 subscribers pretty soon. Because <laughs> that's a pretty big milestone. Uh, the last thing I want to say is, for this series, I want to kind of get different developers to kind of guest star on the show. And share their ideas with me and, and we can go back and forth and... Just so you guys can get a different perspective of the topic that we're talking about during the episode. So if you are a dev and have released a game or are working on a cool game and you want to be featured on the the show, go ahead and shoot me an email. Uh, the email is on my about page on my YouTube channel. And hopefully we can get in, t in contact and we can choose a topic and discuss everything from there. Alright, now on to the topic, creating your first game. Before I start, I just want to say that this is all stuff from my perspective and stuff that I have learned from my experience. And if you don't agree with this, then it's fine. And uh, if you have any suggestions or things that you think would help you create your first game, go ahead and comment that in this comment section below. But anyways, so there are common pitfalls that come with creating your first game. And this, this usually happens to newcomers to so the whole game industry type thing, the whole creating games for a living, I guess. And these these factors kind of contribute to their to like frustration or just quitting the whole thing in general so some common pitfalls are the idea is too big so uh, when new developers usually try and do is they when they want to uh, they play a game or something like Skyrim and they go whoa this game is huge and you know made it like a trillion dollars or whatever and they automatically think that hey I can make a game like this, a really cool RPG, I already have all this lore and, and gameplay ideas that I can just fit into this, this thing, let me start making it. Now while that is a good thing to do, to have big ideas, it's a bad thing to do when you're starting off, because you don't really know how to make a game, so working on this big project will lead to just frustration and, and quitting it eventually. And with big scope leads to lack of motivation so basically as you start coming up with a super huge project you start to lose motivation on it as, as the project goes on because motivation is kind of a thing where it's you have a you have a lot of it when you first start off but then as you work on the project it starts to diminish and of course motivation is also another key factor with other other pitfalls because sometimes the project doesn't turn out as expected or you have no sense of direction for the project so for example, the, the project comes to a halt and you just kind of stop, or the project just hasn't progressed in a while and you haven't gotten anything done. Those two things lead to a lack of motivation and you start to lose motivation because of those. Another big factor for losing motivation is no experience or not enough experience. Now that ties in with the big scope because if you don't have enough experience then your idea of a big scope like a big MMO or something won't turn out as expected, which will lead you to lose motivation on it. Alright, now let's get to creating your first game. So, again, these are things that I think would help. So, some of you may not agree with this, but you should probably consider all of these and take it heavily just to, just to be safe. Uh, so, some things you're going to have to do before you create your first game. And now, the first one will be make tons of small games. And this might sound a little weird, but basically what I mean by this is uh, whether you're following tutorials or just screwing around in, in your game engine, just make games that you kind of just play around with the mechanics and play around with, with the software you're using. And these aren't things that you're going to release, they're just things that you kind of use as practice. So for example, an artist doesn't, like Leonardo da Vinci, he doesn't make the Mona Lisa when he first starts off painting. He does a bunch of sketches and kind of practices his technique and stuff like that first and these are things that he's never going to show to anybody but then eventually after after all those sketches and all that those practice paintings he ends up making the Mona Lisa which is you know I guess in this case it would be considered a game and then all his sketches would be considered like practice games and this ties in with learning as much as you can so whether it be tutorials forums or 
just self-experience, you need to learn as much as you can about the game development process and how to make something work. So after you have both of those prerequisites, you can actually get to creating the idea for your game. So the first thing you're going to want to do is start small. And don't go ahead and think big MMOs or big RPGs or RPGs or FPSs in general because those things are very complicated and they, ha they take a lot of time to perfect. So by starting small, you can just do like a simple platformer, a top-down shooter. An FPS can be fine as long as you don't have very complicated things in it, if it, as long as it's super simple. And some of you might be thinking like, hey, I don't want to start small, I just want to get to, to making these games, these AAA games. And you have to realize that game development is a skill that takes time to, to develop. Anybody can learn this skill as long as they have the time and patience to, to practice that, that craft. So for example, Edmund McMillan, I think I said that name right, uh, the creator of Super Meat Boy and The Binding of Isaac. If you look at his portfolio, those aren't the only two games he's made. He's made so many other games before that. For example, like I think Spitter is one of them, the Triagnoid or something. And you, you can see these games on Steam, he has a whole collection of them. And these are games that, you know, they might, they might not be his starting point, but they are things that that got him to, to create stuff like Super Meat Boy and, and The Binding of Isaac. So every game developer, every indie developer and every AAA developer has had a starting point somewhere. Another way to kind of help you start small is to limit yourself. Now two things that I usually do when I limit myself is with palette, color palette, and mechanics. So color palette kind of ties in with the art and mechanics ties in with the programming, obviously. And with color palette, you just kind of have to choose some colors that will that will be used throughout the entire art process. So, for example, if you look at the Game Boy Jam on Game Jolt, one of the rules for that Game Jam is to have a four color palette. And if you look at all these games, the art is just beautiful, and they only use four colors. And what that allows you to do is to focus more on making the game rather than working on just the art. And now you don't have to limit yourself uh, that much of just four colors. Like you can use the NES palette, you can use, uh, I think that's 64 colors, the Pico 8 color palette, which I think is uh, 10 maybe, or 12. And there are a bunch of other palettes that you can use to create your art that a lot of people have made for different things. Also limiting your mechanics can help you focus more on making the game again, rather than just fixing, like spot fixing bugs and, and making your mechanics tie together. So for example, like Mario, there are only two mechanics. Or, or there are a couple of mechanics. There's the jumping, and that's kind of that kind of works as your attacking. And then there are the mushrooms, which work as your health, and the goombas, which also work as enemies. And all of these are very simple because there's only a few of them. If you work, if you look at something like Skyrim, which has probably like a, a bunch of mechanics, like for example the level up system, uh, you can like specifically level up a certain skill. There's the, the forging, which you can like make your own weapons and improve them. There's the whole quest system, which tracks your quests and side quests. And uh, there's the whole real-time aspect of it, where where you can like find somebody and they have their own uh, schedule that they take throughout the world. And all that stuff is very complicated, and while it works together, it's not simple. And it's not something that you should make for your first game. Now, after you've thought up all the, these ideas and how to limit yourself, you need to prototype your project first. So a prototype is basically the simplest form your game can take while still having the, the main concept. So for example, Mario. A prototype for Mario would be absolutely no art, so just boxes and, and cubes, I guess. The only mechanics that would be in the game would be moving left and right and then jumping and then d uh, dying as well. No Goombas, no upgrades, no no mushrooms, no no Bowser or anything. And if you were to test that game with just the jumping and moving, and the game is fun, then you keep it. If it's not, then you have to revise it until it is fun. And don't be afraid to switch out your mechanics for this portion, because if both of your mechanics don't tie in together well, or if your mechanics don't tie in together well, then don't be afraid to change one of them and see if that works. Okay, let's move on to the next one. So, a simple game de design, but with great execution, goes a long way. So another example would be Super Crate Box. Now if you haven't played Super Crate Box or you don't know what it is, the main concept of the game is 
uh, there's one screen, it's so like one room, and enemies drop down from the top and they die at the bottom. So like as soon as they, they reach the bottom, they, they'll die. And the player has a gun, so he can move, jump, and shoot. But there's also these crates that drop in every now and then. Now, if the player touches one of those crates, he picks the crate up and he gets a new weapon. And that's basically as simple as it can get, and that's that's basically the entire game. So, if you look at that game and play it, you can see that it's very addicting. Because the main goal is picking up the crates and, and you don't have to worry about the enemies, but the guns let you take out the enemies and get the crates faster. So, all these different mechanics tie in together well, because they have a lot of purposes for the actual game. Another example would be a, a kind of like a AAA franchise, I guess, which is Resident Evil. If you look at those games, the gun, mainly the pistol I'm talking about right now, uh, it acts as both a offensive and defensive weapon. So, uh, for example, Resident Evil 4, if you have a ton of enemies coming at you, you can either shoot the head, which will kind of get rid of them faster, or you can shoot their legs, which will kind of st uh, slow them down. So depending on what kind of player you are, uh, either offensive or defensive, you can take both of those concepts and use them to your advantage. And the last thing I want to mention is to work constantly, but take a break every once in a while. Thank you guys for watching this episode of DevLoot. Uh, if you have any suggestions for a new topic, go ahead and comment them below, and I'll I'll probably make a, an episode on that. Uh, again, if you are a dev that has made a game or is releasing a game, uh, please contact me uh, to see if I can feature you on the channel. And again, thank you for all the feedback from, from the last episode. Hopefully you guys will enjoy this one as much as you did the last one. So thank you guys for watching, and goodbye.